All right, hello everyone. This is Militarizing Your Backyard with Python, Computer Vision, and the Squirrel Hordes. Probably my favorite uh, title of all the conference, so. Uh, Kurt Grandis is our presenter. This is a 30 minute talk with five minutes at the end reserved for questions and answers. Right. Take it away. Hi, so uh, my name's Kirk Grandis, and apparently uh, from talking to some of you, it sounds like I'm not alone in uh, being in a constant state of war with my neighborhood squirrels. Uh, so today I'll be talking about some of uh, my efforts to, to thwart them with Python, um, and I'll share some of that uh, with you. Um, I, have a, I have a background in machine learning, um, but I've never really done anything in computer vision. Uh, so I'll share some of what I've uh, learned about OpenCV, computer vision, and uh, other things along the way. So uh, we'll cover some backgrounds, goals, look at uh, OpenCV a little bit, uh, talk about how you go about detecting squirrels, shooting squirrels, and then um, hopefully I'll show you some wet squirrels and uh, <laughs> next steps from here. So this all really started with um, the Great Backyard Bird Count. And if you're not familiar with this, it's a great way to get like, your family and kids involved in uh, bird watching. It's essentially like one weekend where uh, you go out to your uh, bird feeders and count all the birds and visitors that come, come to your feeder. So if you see like, uh, like 19 cardinals out in your feeder at once, cardinals 19. It's, it's great, it was really addicting. And um, I started wondering, well, you know, what do these counts look like when I'm not around? Uh, you know, like throughout the day, throughout the week, the month. And this is like where my wife starts rolling her eyes when I start talking about a new project. Because I was thinking, all right, so I do a little bit of machine learning. I've, I've played around with birds and biological sciences a bit. So what if we build like something that can uh, automatically detect birds, classify them, and count them when I'm not around? Um, so we started down that, that path, peaceful route. Um, <laughs> and plans changed. Um, we live in North Carolina. Uh, we're uh, begin to have a long growing season. Have we're begin to agriculture. Try to keep my, our kids involved in the our, our home garden. Um, last year, the squirrels like devastated our our garden. I got through all of our uh, preventative measures. Take up peaches. Take one bite. Throw them to the ground. Uh, but the last straw was uh, the squirrels taking a bite of my kids' pumpkins. Uh, <laughs> You know, they, they planted them, they've been watching them grow with expectations, you know, they might have the great pumpkin. Uh, one bite and just let it rot on the vine. And here they are, clearly devastated. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do we protect the family? Um, like I mentioned, this is non-lethal, you know, no, no squirrels were harmed that bad. Um, <laughs> so and just, just to clarify, so everyone's on the same page, the idea here is you have an automated turret capable of finding a squirrel, locating, targeting them, shooting them, and getting rid of the squirrel. Uh, just the, the overall view of the system, just so you know uh, what we'll be walking through. One is we need a sensor. We need some way to take a stream of video from the environment, bring it in. Um, the next part comes into the uh, image analysis, the, the computer vision part. Let's find what we call blob detection. Let's find the pieces of interest in the, in the image. And then let's figure out what those things are. And if there's any squirrels there, if there are, let's target them and shoot them. All right, so I, I started, I jumped in. I, I picked up OpenCV. It's really popular um, and, and powerful. Um, it has tons of uh, computer vision algorithms out there ready to use. Um, easily accessible, image processing, video analysis, motion detection, all sorts of things to get you started. Um, and the big part about it was it has great Python support. Um, you ha can use native Python structures to pass it in. So like, instead of having to use like their native CV rect or their data structures, um, they now have support for, uh, you can pass in a tuple representation, things like that. The other thing that was awesome was uh, it works well with NumPy. So I could take those images and pass them over to NumPy, use SciPy, uh, and do kind of my offline analysis. Um, and it does it efficiently, so it doesn't have to copy memory, like uh, duplicate it in order for it to work within Python. It just passes that reference to the original data. So you don't take a huge performance hit from, from doing that sort of processing within Python. Here's a sensor. I just picked a. Uh, Yule webcam, get going. 
And just to show you a little bit about um, OpenCV and how easy it is to get started, um, you go right here, um, import CV, create a named window that we're going to put an image in, uh, create a capture device, and then I can query that my capture device, get an image, show the image. Dead simple to get started. Um, and once you have that, you can start creating processing pipelines with all the algorithms that they have uh, easily available. So for the, uh, the bot bottom picture I showed uh, using something called the canny edge detector. Pretty simple, just a way of finding edges within a picture. Um, I can take that image that was created up above, convert it to grayscale, and just pass it in there. And you know, you imagine this in a loop, you're taking all these frames, and now you have this processing pipeline that's uh, in incredible. So the first step we were talking about was blob detection. Um, in computer vision, how do we um, tell the computer that, that there's something of interest on the page at all? You know, it, what makes it interesting? The movement, the color, um, it, it could be any number of things. Uh, but whatever we define that region of interest, we'll call them blobs. Uh, and uh, OpenCV has a number of tools like built in that will let, do this for you. Um, there's also CV blobs lib um, that uh, gives you um, some different blob detection algorithms. Um, I was having some problems with, with those because take a look at my backdrop of the bird feeder. I've got a lot of um, leaves and branches and they're swaying in the wind and stuff. So it's, it's throwing off a lot of false positives. Um, so uh, this book down here um, has a, a great uh, introduction to a code book approach. So basically, can we find a way to do background subtraction or foreground segmentation? Can we define like, this is background, this is the foreground? Um, and you end up doing this kind of average, you look at a pixel, and you take the pixel's average value over some window of time and, and build up a profile. And you do that for all your pixels, so then now when it leaves, um, the leaves are swaying or something, yeah, I, I know that value, it's in there, we're not gonna worry. But if something totally out of the ordinary, like a gray squirrel pops through, um, then that, that jumps out of those norms and uh, we can start doing something. So we found, we, we've done that and now we've, we're locating blobs, which are just like masks or, or bounding boxes around um, regions of interest. So how do we, what are those blobs? You know, like what's, what's in them? We just have these kind of like outlines. Um, so this gets into to squirrel detection. You know, can, can we detect uh, a bird and discriminate between a bird and a squirrel? Um, and, you know, I, from my previous projects, I was interested, can we detect like difference between like a male cardinal or a female cardinal? Um, how, how do we go about classifying these things? So um, I jumped in and used uh, support vector machines. Um, they're, they're pretty robust classification uh, tool that um, pretty resilient to noise and multidimensional data. Um, and set out to just turn this into a binary classification problem. Is this blob a squirrel or is it not a squirrel? Um, and I used a tool called libSVM. Um, OpenCV has a SVM library built in, um, and I think it's based on libSVM, but uh, I was kind of familiar with this one, so I went here. And once you've trained it up, it's dead simple also, SVM import, and then predict, you pass in a vector. Okay. Uh, but how do I turn a squirrel or not a squirrel into a vector? Um, so, <laughs> what is squirrelness? Um, you know, we, we could just take that blob, that region, that matrix, and uh, uh, turn it into one long, long vector. Um, but we, we can impart some more uh, information to get better predictive power. Um, so we look at blob size, uh, well, let me jump. Here. So first we can jump into blob size. This was a really simple one to put in. How big was that blob? And this allowed us to easily discriminate between, um, let's say, a squirrel um, and uh, a titmouse or a sparrow, a finch, much smaller birds. Great. But now um, you're going to get some wet morning doves, maybe a couple wet cardinals. So you know it, it was a decent first step. Um, so what's the next, next piece of squirrelness, like, or, or birdness in this case? Um, when, when you look at any field guide of birds, 
one of the first things uh, that most of the books have are, are color, right? What, what color is the bird? Then you start thumbing through that. So we could use OpenCV to go ahead and uh, create color histograms for each of the blobs. Uh, we, and we can get them for each of the channels. So in this case, um, here's a sample histogram of the red channel between the squirrel and a cardinal. Uh, pretty different and, and enough to make that di uh, color discrimination. Um, so, so that gives us an, an, another piece. Um, but now we have, uh, we might still get uh, the morning doves. Uh, they're kind of grayish. Um, so some of the female cardinals are kind of on the gray side too. So, you know, there's a chance there might be some overlap and um, some false positives. So I was trying to think, you know, what's a, another way we can, what's something else that, that, that defines squirreliness? So um, that squirrely tail, that, that's a, a, a nice piece. So like, how, how can we get after like capturing what's a squirrel tail? Um, so it went after, it's kind of the texture. It's fluffy, there's lots of colored, different, it's random and kind of noisy. Um, so looked at uh, entropy, uh, which is just a kind of a way of calculating, uh, it's like a measure of randomness in the, in the picture. Uh, and I looked at it in three different ways. Uh, one is just overall entropy, just the overall texture noise in the entire blob. The other is just kind of the standard deviation of entropy along that. So you, you have some regions of uh, uh, smoothness, nice silky smooth fur, and then others where you have a noisy tail. Um, another thing I threw in there, which seemed to help a little bit, was uh, calculating the entropy or the texture on the left side of the blob and the right side of the blob. Um, because the squirrels are, you, you, a lot of times you'll see in this profile picture. So it's like, oh, you know, if. Uh, you have a lot of texture on one side of that big fluffy tail and the other. Uh, you know, that, that could be not necess uh, necessary, but sufficient conditions for that. It's rare that you get just the tail facing you. Um, so we put all those together, create one long, long vector, pass it in to the support vector machine, and the support vector machine tells us what um, that blob is. Now, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to kind of classify what a squirrel is, other things of squirreliness, like one would be uh, motion. Like, the squirrels have a very squirrely, bounding, leaping nature as they're on approach. Uh, I've never seen a bird do that, so like, I think tapping into that would be a, another good, good approach. So let's uh, shoot the squirrel now. So, uh, I had dreams of this like, uh, like pressurized water cannon and stuff, but uh, I took the first step, uh, this Mark I, ended up using a super soaker off the, off the shelf of this uh, water clip. That, that was the, the primary uh, uh, weapon. Here, I've never been accused of being a carpenter, uh, but this is <laughs> what I <laughs> rigged up to, to mount that gun. Um, so it's, mounted on, um, onto a, uh, a tilt bracket, and that's mounted on top of uh, a pan bracket. So I have servos controlling uh, tilt and servos controlling uh, the, the pan, and then a third servo uh, pulling the trigger. Uh, and you can't see it, but hiding behind the, that, um, right behind the gun on the table is, uh, is the webcam, so it's, it's right there. And behind it is a box housing uh, the Arduino. So this is how um, I power the, the turret and essentially um, communicated with all, all the low-level targeting information. So I could just pass information about where to point the gun and then to actually pull the trigger. Um, I started off, and, and I used Pi Serial to get this. And, and again, this is it was so simple. Import Serial, Arduino Serial Serial, pass in the device that you want to communicate with and then you can just write to it, send your commands that way. And um, so I wanted to start, uh, I, had heard, uh, I think the past couple of Pythons I kept hearing about uh, PyMite or Python on a chip, which is kind of that embedded Python. Um, I thought, that, well, that'd be awesome if I could program the Atmel processor using that. Um, I ended up starting using a lot of code that was on the Project Sentry. If anyone wants to do a Sentry gun, great material there to get you started. Um, and including some code that you can load up on the Arduino and just get started. So I started there, heavily modded that up. 
Uh, all right, so some of the results. Squirrels get wet. Um, the false positives are pretty, pretty low. Um, in the end, it was just a lot more satisfying not having it trained uh, in on squirrels throughout the yard and just camp on the feeder, wait for them to, to get there. Um, I, I, I've used the other mode you know, for the kids. They kind of like that. Um, but yeah, the, the next round, I'm going to need stronger firepower. Um, it's just, you'll see, it just doesn't do it justice. And uh, because the squirrels are so persistent, um, I need a larger water reservoir. That emptied that clip pretty damn quick. <laughs> All right. Let me see. And I should mention, uh, so it's really hard to see the water being shot, but that's what's causing them to leap off here. And he just got it right there. What was that? <laughs> and, and by the end, they don't care. <laughs> we, uh, we live in North Carolina, so maybe they don't mind getting spritzed in the heat, but yeah, here they'll, they'll just uh, sit, sit there eating, getting spritzed. <laughs> I thought for sure this would be the solution. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's go back. All right. So next steps, um, definitely stronger firepower. Uh, you know, like those those leaping jets, the the water things. I, I think that might be a way to go, or the uh, the pressurized water cannon somehow. Um, I think that would, that would work. Circling back, doing Python on a chip would be, I think, great. Uh, but if I, if I go back to peacetime efforts and try to do the bird classifier, I think the next step would really be getting uh, some better optics for doing some, uh, better discrimination between the, the different bird types. But that's it. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. That was excellent. Uh, if anyone has questions, please come up to microphones located on the left or right of the stage here. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so you didn't talk about uh, too much about how you actually aim the, um, the water gun at, uh, at the squirrel and how you, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that, how you analyze where the squirrel is in the image and then how that is processed in terms of the servos? Yeah, so um, it starts off, um, the, the camera was mounted, it, it was static, it wasn't gonna move. Um, so I just kind of did some crude calibration of, of the field of vision. Um, so it, if the blob's over, uh, so many degrees over, calculate that sort of distance. And yeah, I dove into a lot more physics than I thought I would have to in indirect fire and, and firing angles. So um, that was kind of cool. But in the end, like I said, uh, camping was just better. Um, <laughs> so honed in in just like, uh, just a small region on the, um, on the feeder, but like um, setting it up for uh, the kids is still uh, use use that more uh, uh, that that targeting system. Okay. Uh, I'm I may have missed what you're using for uh, hardware at the application level, and I'm wondering if you've considered like thin clients, Raspberry Pi, that kind of thing, or if that's even practical. 
So, so how would that be? Uh, what you're using for hardware at the Python level. Uh, is this, I mean, is it like hooked up to an old notebook or? Oh yeah, it was just this old, uh, I think an old Dell running, okay, cool. running uh, I think Ubuntu server or something like that. Okay. It really, it didn't require that much. Uh, the live system didn't require that much hardware. The training, um, that I put on a, a fatter machine just for, uh, made things go a little quicker. Okay, have you looked into uh, something stripped down like a, like a thin client or uh, the, the new one, the Raspberry Pi, or is that gonna be too thin? I, I hadn't even looked at that. So. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, two questions. I just thought of a second one when, when he asked there. What, what, uh, what did you do for training? Um, the basically started off um, identifying all the blobs in a picture. Um, there's some tools. Um, I forget if it's an OpenCV proper or one of the like Sorry, hard I training. I should have been more clear. Where, where, what did you use for your training data? Oh, my backyard. Okay, just, so you just you just took video and pictures and went through and manually tagged things. Yeah, I set up the right. webcam and just kind of let it let it run for a while, and then had to go through and end up uh, breaking things out, tagging them. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, after doing it, I was like, this is a perfect Mechanical Turk sort of project. So I think if I did that again, I think that's the route I would go. Yeah. And then actually the, the question that I came up here to ask, can you talk more about Python and chip? I haven't heard much about that and you yeah. mentioned it a couple times. I don't know too much about it other than um, I think it was um, an effort to make it uh, work on um, embedded systems. And I th I th last I saw, I think it worked on uh, Atmel uh, AVR, but it's okay. stripped down. I don't think list comprehensions and things like that are there, just kind yeah. of really core functionality. Neat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm next. I think I'm next. Uh, so I wanted to thank you for this wonderful presentation and suggest you might consider a game cam that hunters use for actually detecting uh, game and that might work well for you and good luck in your efforts at keeping the squirrels at bay. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, he already got to my questions about training. Uh, the other question was, if we follow those links, will we find your classifier code? Oh, uh, no, I, I, I mean, I can post some of that and, and kind of walk through if there's interest to catch me after and uh, maybe I can, I can walk through some of it. The, it's not gonna be super generalizable. Um, I, I suspect, I mean, these are squirrels from my neighborhood. Right. With my, and I didn't make it super robust, like squirrels in my neighborhood on my backgrounds. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I, it, mileage may vary. I'm just more curious at approaches rather than, you know, targeting my spe spe specific squirrels. So, gotcha. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, can you give us some idea of, of how long it took to get from you know, the time that you thought, hey, this would be a good idea to getting it to where uh, you see, and how much of that time was kind of noodling around and experimenting to try to figure out what would work versus actually writing what you ended up with? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I forget when it, and like it started with that bird, bird thing. So I think I had started with that, toying with that idea l last year. I think they do it in November for the great bird, backyard bird count. Uh, yeah, then Pyth PyCon passed. I know it's been a, a, a few months of, of, of work um, on and off. Uh, yeah, no, no super hardcore focus development on that. The, uh, my experience with OpenCV has, shall we say, not be good. Maybe I'm not as persistent as a squirrel, but uh, it seemed like you know, I need this version, yum install, or whatever <laughs> gives me that version, and uh, it was just kind of a nightmare. But uh, I wanted to see if that was atypical or if you were running into those sort of problems and if you had any, maybe any suggestions on that. Yeah, I think that was my experience too, because it was my first foray into it, and I was trying to figure it out, and there was uh, documentation, but that wouldn't match the API it pulled down um, off of, uh, the, tried to, pull that in. I think I ended up using, uh, somebody, somebody has a, a PPA for uh, OpenCV 2.3, 2 and I just tried to standardize on, on that and, and, and use it. Um, but yeah, the, the documentation and some of the tutorials you find online, uh, it seems like that API has changed quite a bit over the past few versions. Um, but this all sounds very familiar. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 
Did you think at all to use uh, some sort of binocular tracking and to do some sort of depth of field rather than like background subtraction? Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, I think, it, if I had more time and to play, I think I would definitely go that route. Um, yeah. And then another thing I want to mention is um, there's a project called Open TLD. It's, um, I think, tracking learning detection or something like that. Uh, it's based on OpenCV. It was a project that I saw on uh, Hackaday. Um, some student was his master's thesis. It's basically built on OpenCV, but it does all of the learning and tracking on the fly automatically. <laughs> it's, um, it's only in MATLAB, I think, right now, and there's a, there's a C++ implementation. But um, if anybody's interested in this kind of stuff, I'd strongly suggest looking at uh, OpenTLD or Predator. And uh, there's some pretty <laughs> amazing YouTube videos of, you know, it'll follow his left or right eye, and it tracks it. It huh. can go off screen, on screen, and it maintains tracking. So yeah, something seems like an interested crowd to check out. <laughs> OpenTLD. Thank you. Please, a warm round of applause for Kurt.